welcome to Interview with the Fae. I'm Pixie Rose from Pixie Steps and here is Michelle from Stella Faye Connections who will be channeling for us today. So Michelle will be channeling the Fairy Collective. Now Michelle, did you just want to quickly go over, you know, who you are and what you're about and a bit about who you are channeling today? Yeah, sure. So um, for those of you that don't know me, um, like my name is Michelle. Um, I am in Northern BC in Canada. Um, I have been channeling with the Fairy Collective since about December um, when they came through in a, uh, in a QHHT session actually and I was quite surprised Prize to come into contact with the Faye. I wasn't expecting it, um, but they have actually been an incredibly big part of, um, I, I suppose, my spiritual evolution going forward. They have a lot of amazing information to share when it comes to connecting with the earth. Beautiful. So, so this is the Fairy Collective, and I don't know if you. Um, know exactly how to explain who the fairy collective are yeah so from from my understanding the fairy collective themselves are a group of fairy energy that is mostly on the other side so they're not you know like incarnated in lives at the moment um but they essentially watch over and hold a lot of that frequency um so they're able to send information um to us that they're kind of like i suppose like the uh like what our well ancestors would be to the fae like they're the um good healed well pieced together energy that uh, can offer some perspective from their point of view um they have also told me that they have that they are still connected with the fae that are incarnated and they receive messages from them as well about you know like how things are currently um so they're still connected with how things are progressing currently on the fairy side yeah beautiful okay so are you ready to tune in yeah yeah um so it'll just take me a moment i'll go get the fairy collective um i know lots of you have been sending in questions and uh we'll we'll see what wonderful guidance they have for you all today they have definitely been very excited <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. We are so happy to be here today. Good to be here. Mm, we are feeling so much joy, so much joy for the reaching out to us. It is exciting times. We are so glad that we are able to connect in this way. Thank you so much for joining us. <clears throat> yes, it is a pleasure to be here. So our first question today is, I think I'd like to start first with people are unsure about the fairies, basically. Um, there are a few people that talk about fairies being dangerous and, and warning people against welcoming the fae energy into their homes or into their space. So we're wondering why this might be, if you have any insight to this. Mm, yes. There is, there are a few angles that we could explore when it comes to this topic. Humans and the Fae do have a long sort of complicated history. Mm. And there, while there once was very good times when there was a lot of ease of connection between the two, there has been modern developments which have pulled a lot of people away from communication and connection with nature. You see, the Fae themselves look after nature. They're very well connected. They are a part of this strong elemental energy and they are very free spirited, you could say. They do not conform to a set of rules when it comes to society in the same way that you would. They have elders that they respond to and get information from, but they are really free spirited. And the Fae, because they are so light in energy in the fifth dimension and so connected to what the plants think and feel, they can see energy from humans. They can see 
one's ecological footprint, you could say. They can see how nature is responding to you when you are around. So the Fae, being very protective over Mother Earth, have sometimes been troublemakers in some sense because they are there to advocate and stand up for that Earth, for, for the energies that they are protecting and looking over. So there has been times when the Fae have sort of caused a little bit of havoc in certain individuals' connections because they have been messing with parts of nature that were very important. So there has been a little bit of back and forth in this regard. And we could also say the same how there are good and bad humans and it's it's the same for the faith. They are they're not all the exact same as far as what they stand for and how they feel about humans. They are all very different in this regard. So we would suggest when connecting in and wanting to do so in a safe way, you could say, is to take into account that they are all individual and approach them as you are meeting and making a new friend. Some Fae are very excited to see humans. There are lots of Fae, fae as well that aren't sure how this new connections are going to go and they'll be a little bit more standoffish and that is fine. So be open to the ones that are willing and excited to come see you. Hmm. Okay, thank you. And another piece that we could add is the importance of approaching them in a genuine manner with a genuine concern and wanting to connect with that nature energy and share your love of nature with them. This is a fantastic way to start building a relationship with them. They can tell if you're sincere. They can, they can see, they can see your energy. Yes. Okay. So, so there's a need for people to work on their own energy and just be, become a bit more aware of, of what they're doing and what they're contributing to. Yes, especially when it comes to specifically connecting in with the nature and elemental energies themselves. Okay, thank you. So for those that are, that are ready to welcome some fairy energy into their homes or their environment, is creating a fairy house or a fairy door the best way to do this? Hmm. It is one of them. Creating a fairy door or fairy house or setting up things which remind you of the Fae creates a focal point. It creates a intention to be welcoming for their energy and the Fae can feel these imprints. Another very important piece is to have bits of nature elements around as the Fae love to help take care of nature. The more plants and nature energy you have around, the more of them are more likely to come about. Mm. Also, joy is very important to help welcome them in. You could have a fairy door sitting somewhere in a dark corner where there isn't much joy or celebration in your home. And that's not going to be very inviting for the Fae. The Fae do glide upon excitement and joy wavelengths, you could say. And the more of that that there is around, it makes it easy for them to come in because the energy is lighter. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. So is there anything that specifically people need to do beforehand, like a ritual or anything like that, in order to welcome the Fae in? Mm. You could. There are 
many rituals which have done, which have been done throughout the times. You, it is not necessary, but you could. The most important piece is the set of intention that you are happy to welcome them around and about. And leaving offerings of sweet things are always appreciated for them. Mm. The Fae love sweet things. Mm. Okay, wonderful. So is there a specific purpose to the fairy door? Can you tell us how fairy doors started? Mm. We believe fairy doors started from when parts of our world were a little bit more visible to the human eye, as fairies do actually have a lot of doors and homes in trees and in nature and in stumps. They do live in these spaces. The Fae are able to open up space within dimensions. So they are able to live in a tree stump without actually being in the tree stump, if this makes sense. The door itself is kind of like a portal to a space that they have created and expanded to be close and connected in with nature. So the fae can have a portal in a tree which opens up into a beautiful large space where they would live and play and celebrate without causing any harm to the tree as they're not digging into it. They are overlaying a form of dimensional expansion. The fae are very good at this. So this we believe is where humans got the idea to start putting doors places is in representation of the portals that the fae like to make and open in order to create their living space wonderful that makes so much sense is it important for us as humans to ask for permission from the fae before we take things from nature, such as mushrooms or anything like that? Hmm. We would say hmm, that it is always important to ask nature. Hmm. There is lots of times where there is an abundance of things which are happy to be picked and to be celebrated. And it is taking with a respect which is important some people take and damage the nature while they're taking and this makes the fae and the nature spirits very quite sad as the say mushrooms are quite a gift and if you ask and tune into the nature energy you will be able to feel whether it is something that is excited to come home with you or something that needs to stay there for a specific purpose. Some places which are known to have a lot of fairies and a lot of fairy energy around, it might not be a bad idea to be more conscious of some of these items in relation to the fae as they might hold a great importance to the fae. But if you were to tune into the energy of the nature, you will get a really good idea. Yes, of course. Now, there seems to be more and more public fairy doors and fairy homes, that sort of thing happening, popping up in public parks and different things like that, nature reserves. What happens if someone steals one of these offerings for the fairies? Hmm. Hmm. What happens? Well, if it was held in high importance, you might not have, it's not a good way to make friends, is it? Hmm. The, the Fae are, hmm, they are lovely and full of joy. They really are beautiful. They can also be a little temperamental. <laughs> and it cannot, not that we would say harm would come to a person, 
but it would make it much more difficult for them to establish positive relationships with these energies going forward. Like we said, the Fae can see your intent and your connection and purposefully taking items which were gifted to them does not leave a good energy trail. You could say there could be a form of karma in connection when it comes to taking energy, the same as that you would create for yourself when stealing from anyone, really. Of course. We've heard of some specific situations about fairies losing their wings or having their wings cut off in different situations. So why is losing one's wings so detrimental? Mm. Well, you see wings. The fairy's wings are grown out of pure joy. It is pure excitement and happiness and love and joy for life, which allows these wings to grow. And not all have been appreciative of the amount of joy a fairy can feel. So it has been a quite a malicious act to want to remove a fairy's wings. Some people that are not in a good place don't like to see other people happy. And the Fae hold so much joy and excitement and light. And the removal of a fairy's wings, even though it might not cause enough physical damage to say, kill a fairy, it will kill a fairy. It will break their heart. Their light will just go out. It is incredibly devastating for a fairy to lose its joy. A fairy stays in this energy a lot of the time. They are so joyful and full of so much love that it is quite heartbreaking to a fae to lose their wings. And it unfortunately has been an act of aggression towards the fae for some time. Yeah, wow, thank you. Someone is wondering, um, do, do the fae have spirit guides like humans do? Mm. Yes, you see the hmm, in, in senses, it may not be the same as your guides, but the Fae, they, let's put it this way, a Fae can tune in to the nature around it. A Fae can tune in to a river and hear its song and feel its story. A Fae can tune in to a canyon and feel how it came to be. So it's these elements of nature and these guiding forces that way which help guide the Fae a lot as they can feel into Gaia's energy and connection and they understand things that are important for her to have around. And it is this energy that guides them a lot. Now, Fae also connect in through their ancestors a lot in this way. So let's say a particular bloodline of Fae have always taken care of the trees. When a Fae takes care of an object, they put their light into the object and some light from the object comes back. So they start to become one with the things that they care about. There's a certain degree of communication and connection. Now, when this fae leaves the earth, part of her soul, his it or his soul is imprinted in the areas that they have cared for and spread their light. So a fae might, in a way, become a part of the overall energy that are trees. So other fae can actually tune into this energy through the trees and they can start to communicate with parts of their ancestors who have came before them and also cared for these 
pieces of nature. So this is mostly how the Fae connect in and communicate. They have a council of elders who open up to larger energies outside of themselves. And sometimes other star beings and races have worked with the Fae, but they come in mostly through the connection to the elders. It is usually not something that a lot of Fae seek out as they are very connected in. And imagining anything beyond the moon for most Fae can be very overwhelming as they feel and see so much energy and there is so much within the earth and the moon. This is mostly where they like to stay. But some Fae have been known to pop in and out of other dimensions on other planets and also connect into their nature. But most of it is usually within that nature to moon energy frame. Yeah, wow, wonderful. Mm. We've heard that fairies have an aversion to iron, so the metal iron. Can you tell us why this is? Mm. A few reasons. Mm. Iron has been, mm. iron is very, it, it, it does have a repelling sort of energy to fade because it is not, it is cold. It doesn't have the same glowing life energy that most other things do. It does put off a resonance, which can be a little bit uncomfortable to the Fae. It's usually not enough to keep them out unless that was the intent. The other piece to this is there has been a collective intent in the past for when people were scared of the Fae and didn't want them around where they would intentionally use iron to do so. So part of this is a learned behavior from the Fae throughout their generations and kind of a fable on their side that when they see iron, it could mean that the humans don't like them. So it is something that has also been passed down sort of folklore, folklore in the Fae side. But just because you have iron in your garden doesn't mean the Fae won't visit. If you intentionally open up space and make an inviting space for them, they will understand that the iron was not put there in an intent to try to keep them out. Yeah, great. Another, another reason why some people might be anxious about welcoming the fairies into their space is often once a fairy portal is created, a lot of cheeky things might happen like things going missing and and that sort of thing can you explain to us why the fae might play tricks like this they have a very cheeky personality <laughs> it is part of their nature to be playful and we understand that humans do not always find it so funny because they are so serious a lot of the time. And sometimes this is the point that the Fae are trying to make. Mm. Sometimes they can feel and they can see you silly humans stuck in your rut and stuck in your routine and not singing and dancing and celebrating and playing. And the Fae want to do these things. So sometimes they may be cheeky and do things to make their presence known because they are trying to get a point across to you. And we do understand that sometimes it can be annoying and it's not always something that humans would like to experience. But work on building that relationship with the Fae. Try to listen to what it is that they were trying to say to you because usually they're not going to do that for no reason. Like we said, they can see your energy. And sometimes they, want to do things to help, but not all humans are good at perceiving them at this point. So doing these little things, which would be an interruption to your day, is a way to get your attention. Hmm. Yes, of course. So simply acknowledging once something's gone missing, acknowledging the fairies, and that might help return the missing items. Yes, acknowledge them and ask 
why if they're, they're not doing it just to be a pain in the butt they really do do these things because they can see a benefit and this is something that part of the reason why people have been unsure of them in the past because they never asked the faith why what, what point are you getting across and just got annoyed at them for creating these little disruptions in their day so take the time to ask and try to tune in and see what message, what message were they trying to get across? Did you need to slow down? Did you need to start taking more time to laugh? When was the last time you danced or celebrated anything? Did you, do you have a collection of houseplants that you might have neglected and let die that the fae might be quite sad about because some of them were their favorites? Mm. Mm. You have to understand that lots of things that you might not see as being a big deal or as being a problem could mean a lot to the Fae. So if you do invite them into your home, it is important to take the time to get to know them. Hmm. Of course, we should always ask why to everything. <laughs> yes. Do, do the Fae have interactions with Bigfoot or Sasquatch? Mm, yes, they do. Bigfoot is a very interesting being. He does like to, he does like to spend a lot of time in solitude, but the Fae do come across him from time to time. They do have their own relationship with him. They like to they like to play hide and seek, you could say, in their own sort of way. Yeah, wow. They can turn multiple things into games. <laughs> Amazing. They may have a lot of connection with different beings of the inner earth. They don't, it depends on the type of fae, as there are fae civilizations and groupings everywhere. And there are some fae which are more nomadic and don't really have, say, a village or a home base, and they really enjoy the freedom of being out on their own. There are other groups of fae which really appreciate having a strong sense of community. So they have communities where a lot of them collect and congregate. And then there are other types of fae which really value connection with the other sorts of beings. Not all Fae want relationships with the other sorts of beings. They, they're very content, you see. They're very happy in the life they have. But some of them are very curious and are happy to explore other connections with other beings. Okay, we've got a few questions on the chat box. The first question is around pulling weeds from the garden. Um, we're wondering if, if that's okay to do, if there's a purpose to the weeds. Do the fairies mind us doing this? Mm. This is an interesting question, you see, because a weed is only a weed because you've decided it is a weed. Mm. <laughs> we would recommend trying to get to know these plants. Sometimes there is a purpose to the weeds. These weeds, a lot of which you all throw away, of course do your research, but some of them are incredibly nutritious. And some of these weeds are being grown largely because there's medicines which could actually be quite helpful. And in humans have lost a lot of that connection. So they see it as an annoyance and they just get rid of them. But there can be a reason why they are there. You see, a lot of your ancestor ancestors could have relied on some of these weeds to feed them. Because in harsh times, in harsh conditions, not a lot of other things might grow. But you see, dandelions can grow anywhere. And they are one of the first greens available in the spring. And they can do much good. There's much nutrition in them. So you can remove weeds. You, you do have, there, there is no harm in pulling these things from your garden to make space for other things that you are planting there. You are 
shifting around the nature that is there. And, and humans do this all of the time. But what we would recommend is take the time to get to know that which you are pulling and decide if it is just going to go in a compost pile or maybe there is a better use for that which you are removing. Yeah, wonderful, thank you. The next question is around the relationship between the fairies and the elves, as we know from some of your other channelings that there's quite a history between the elves and the fairies. Is how, What is this relationship like currently? It is much better these days. It is much better. You see, the elves have... Hmm, the elves... <laughs> The elves are, are more humanoid, so they are much bigger than what the fae are. And they have, you could say, a foot in multiple worlds, as they can connect in with some of which the fae connects into, but they also see and perceive a lot more to some of the story. So there has been lots of disagreements in the past between the two of them as far as what the right course of action has been. They have not always seen eye to eye and wanted to work together or have worked together well. But there has been, there has been much that has transpired in, in recent years, which has brought a lot of them back together. There was a time when the Fae were under grave attack and the elves did come in to offer assistance and rescue the Fae from the energies that were attacking them. And the Fae didn't necessarily, some of them were happy about this, others weren't ready to give up their fight and ended up going back to the battle. <clears throat> it didn't end very well for the Fae that went back. This did actually end up helping the connection in some way between the Fae and the elves as the Fae did realize that the elves actually did have some valid perspective to offer and that maybe they should listen to some of the wider perception that they had access to. So from this gesture and act, there has been a lot more collaboration between the races. Now, there has always been some friendships on and off here and there, but in a large scale, you, we could say that they are they do work better together now than what they have in the past. Yeah, wonderful. Can you shed any light to the purpose or meaning behind someone who has incarnated with elven and fae energy? Someone who's connected to both the elves and the fairies? Mm. Yes, we would say some, some humans are connected to multiple inner earth races. Um, most humans have incarnated, not all, but most humans have incarnated in through this inner earth realm, in through these different forms of elemental energies and beings and have connections to some, some have multiple. In specific, being connected with the Fae and being connected with the Elves, it is interesting. It is as though it is a biological representation of the healing within the ancestry. It is a representation of the unity between the races in a way. It is allowing one to carry the energy to see from both sides of the story. Mm we would recommend that you all feel in to see if you fit into more than one category, as you may very well. And sometimes these, these connections may make it easier for you to connect in with certain races because you actually have a past life imprint in these areas. And there is more energetic pathway for you to connect in. So don't feel bad if somebody has an easier time connecting in with other races than what you do. They might just have more connection there. We recommend that everybody tries to find where their specific connections lie as they will have an easier time communicating with that form of energy. And how does one do that? How do we know if we are connected to the Fae? 
Mm, you must simply ask. We would say that a lot of you, a lot of you know inside, may feel this sense of magic and joy and wonder and this rebellious sense of just wanting to dance and play in the rain. <laughs> We do understand that sometimes humans have blocks up to receiving these sorts of informations as it is not something that is common in your day-to-day -day reality. It is not something that is taught in your life structure. So lots of people have walls put up around perceiving these sorts of connections. But if you start feel like you have memories or if you feel like there is just a particular race or being that you were just so in love with and you can't quite explain why. If you put the intention out to want to know if you have a connection through meditation and clearing your mind and space, start, some information may start to come through for you. Hmm. But we would say that a lot of people have a little inner voice. You just need to listen to it. Wonderful. Going back to the people with both elven and fairy energy, is there specific traits in these people as the fairies and elves are quite different usually? Mm. Yes, they can be quite different. So we would say that you would have a combination of multiple traits. So the, the, the Fae, for example, much joy, very playful, wanting, and sometimes having a bit of disregard for the rules and just wanting to do their own thing and play and dance and connect, oh, connect into so much magic. We would say magic is the common theme and thread as both races do work with magic. The Fae are a lot more raw in their connections as they feel a lot more of these elemental energies stronger. The Elves, their connection is a lot more scientific as they are able to take some of the representation that the Fae might just feel and to actually be able to start to process and construct a sense of science around it and a sense of alchemy around that which the Fae might just instinctively do. So this connection between the two is a very helpful state because it does allow this sense of play and wonder and this raw connection combined with the ability to add a sense of logic and a sense of calculation and build something more more constructive in some ways and with a broader perspective than what might be available to some of the Fae. So while they are different, there is, there is a very strong, beautiful sense of perception which can come in when you have the ability to connect in with both of these energies. Wonderful. Just also going on that question, is there a difference in the source or the essence of each magic? So the magic from the elves and the magic from the fairies? Mm. There is. There is always, well, hmm. Let's, there, there is a common sense and thread between all magics. This sense of, as you, we know some of you refer to as source, as pure source energy and connection that is available to all and it is a common thread amongst all creation. But every group will have its own flavor, you could say. Every collective has its own sense of collective energy which influences how that magic is used and directed. So there is a difference between a group of fae 
creating versus a group of elves creating. One is not better than the other. It is just more in align with what their group collective energy is about and more in line with what the wants and wishes and desires of creation are for each of the groups. We would say that this is true for humans as well. Humans have their own sense of magic, which is tied in to their collective force. And humans that are tied in with these different elemental energies, let's say the elves, they are going to have their own unique group as human, humans who have elf magic tied to their energy. Their creation is going to be different than what a pure elf's energy would be. So there is always going to be subcategories and groups of energy, and it is incredibly powerful when you get together with more individuals that have the same group connections. So if there are multiple human elf hybrid id beings, their energies are going to be much more in sync. So their form of creation, there could be a much stronger connection in some sense because they have a similar resonance in energy. Yeah, wonderful. So when a fairy incarnates as a human, do they often continue again as a human or is it more likely that their soul, like it's their last journey as a human and they're going to incarnate into other realms? So when a human, in, so when a fae incarnates as a human, does the journey end there or do they go back to the magical realm? Is this what the question is? Yeah, is there like, is there a usual for that? Like there's a lot of incarnated fairies currently. Are we likely to, in, to continue on more human experiences or do we get to go back to the fairy realm? Mm, yes, you see, this is, this is an interesting topic. Usually, usually you don't, as it is a, as it is a gradual form of evolution in a way. Not that a human is better or more evolved than a fairy, but that, say, being a fairy and being in touch with those energies is a, is a helpful stepping stone to learn to incorporate those energies into bigger platforms. So similar to how the elves had a much broader perspective, humans have the ability to have a much broader perspective than some of the fae, as they are able to take the perspective of the fae and marry it with everything that they have learned as a human. Humans do deal with a lot more complex issues than what the fae do. So in that way, it is harder. So you may continue to evolve in the directions that your soul needs to explore for your evolution. So it is not common to go back to that realm, but let's talk about the construction of one's soul because <laughs> we are going to pick on Michelle and use her as an example at this moment. <laughs> Some people have a hard time leaving this realm and Michelle was one of them. It took much convincing to get her soul to leave. She did not want to leave the realm of the Fae. And part of the agreement to get her soul to leave was to allow some of her energy to remain there. So she does currently have a parallel life as a Fae. So some of her energy is still tied into this realm, even though she's needing to continue to evolve and move forward into other states of being. So the soul is always going to evolve and move forward, but you have pieces to your soul. So you're not always in only one location. You may have be in multiple locations. So it is possible to still be tied in to some of the magic in these places while you are also growing and continuing on with other journeys. Of course, we are multidimensional beings, aren't we? Mm, yes. Yes, you are. Can you tell us more about the phase connection to the moon? Mm, the moon, the moon is, uh, we wanted to touch on this a little bit more. Speaking of the fae and their, their spirit guides, you could say the moon would be one of their biggest. 
The moon is an honored guest at every celebration. Most celebrations that the Fae have, they specifically do at night, and they like to do it around the full moon when there is lots of moon energy. And they include the moon in everything that they do, as it is a welcome family member who offers guidance and sends them notes and, and love and magic. They receive much magic from the moon. There is magic in the moon's energy and the way that the moon pulls gravity on the planet. So let's say a fae is very, very, very connected in with the essence of all plants. They can feel the essence of the plants. Now, when the moon's gravity changes and the moon is pulling on these plants, it pulls nutrients out of the roots into the ends, and it makes all of the plants and pieces of nature much more vibrant. So when it does this, the fae are also able to connect in with all the forms of nature around them at a much fuller extent. So it allows them to continue their studies in a stronger way. It allows them to have a stronger connection with all forms of nature. So they're very in tune with this push and this pull from the moon's gravity, and they operate a lot based off of this. There are some magics which are only available during different cycles of the moon because it is changing the energy frequency of the nature that they are connected to. We're, we're wondering what the, the phase experience was of the recent solar eclipse. The recent solar eclipse. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. This is this is information. There there seems to be a block around this information. I was trying to access Sorry, I was trying to access that earlier and I don't know. I feel like there's a wall there. Last time I asked about the eclipse, um the, the Fae did tell me at some point that there was that there was times when communication wouldn't be super strong. So it feels like there's some sort of like energy and interference ar around that. And I'm really not too sure what that's in relation to, but it's kind of funny. Like I tried to tune into that before and it almost like kicks me out. I'm not too sure why. Oh no. Um, but yeah, let me get back. Okay. Mm, yes. <laughs> and we do think that that is a good representation. The, the eclipse does cause a lot of static, you could say, between forms of communication between our worlds, which is making it hard to pull through information specifically in relation to this energy at this time. That's okay. We have another question. Going back to the discussion around the removal of of the fae's wings and you mentioned a battle that the elves helped the fairies. We're wondering who or what would harm a fairy and remove their wings? Mm, yes, yes. This is something that we know that we have discussed in the past and we are happy to re-explain some of this story as there are new people here. Mm. There is, there is, mm, because our realms are close to each other and we share the same moon and we share space on the same earth, even though we are connected in through a different layer of dimension. We are connected with a lot of energy force. There has been a lot of imbalanced elemental energies. So the Fae, take care and send love and light into plants and beings and into nature. Humans have forgotten this and they take and they take and they take. There aren't as many humans that have been giving the love back to the earth, been giving the love and the appreciation and the light into things and they are taking and abusing and dumping and pouring things into the earth that should not be there. Now, this has caused energetically shadows. This has caused dark places of energy. This has caused 
it has created these forms of shadow beings that are hungry because they needed light to live and to be and to function properly so this started to happen many years ago the first shadow creature started to emerge and when this first started happening the fae tried giving extra light they started giving extra light to the parts of the earth that the humans should have been taking care of but then so much energy started to become drained that the fae needed to pull away so when the fae removed their light these beings got hungry and angry and the fae were an easy target because quite frankly not a lot of humans are full of a ton of joy <laughs> and the fae were easy prey in that sense they have so much light they glow and they're easy for the shadows to see the shadows want their light but are also not happy that they're happy because they're not feeling that way so it was these imbalanced elemental energies which had started these acts of aggression towards the fae where they might remove their wings and actually drain parts of the life force and energy out of the fae to try to balance themselves out it was this battle that the elves helped the fae with when they first came into contact with these creatures the fae thought that they could outshine them they thought that they could they just needed to be brighter and send more love and light and it wasn't that way the fae learned quickly they needed to hide they need they would go into hiding when the shadows came around because they did not want to be drained this is still a bit of an ongoing issue this is still a bit of an ongoing thing as these shadows still exist the fae have just learned how to hide the fae have just learned how to twist and bend their energy so that they aren't as obvious and they have learned areas where it is safer it is safer for the fae to be around areas where the humans love the earth where the humans put the love and the light into the earth because the energies there are balanced the energies there are not hungry for attention they're not hungry for this form of energy so it is creating a safer space for them to be the Fae are very, very appreciative of humans that create these spaces that put more love and light into the earth. It allows more space for them to be and play and not have to hide. There is much bridging between the realms, which needs to happen. There is much bridging. This, this is part of this ascension process. We all know that you have heard about the earth rising into energy into a different dimension. And part of this begins with the humans putting the love and the light into the earth and raising its energy. And when it does this, it creates bridges to other beings, the fairies being one of the closest and creating space for them to live and breathe and play. So you actually start to create a welcoming mat for some of these energies into this space the more you do this. It is very helpful to them. And the Fae are happy to help teach you all how to use your light and your inner joy and your magic and connect in with nature. But it is important for you to start to create places that are welcoming for them first so that they can freely be around. They have had other issues in the past with other nasty sort of elemental energies not always just these shadow beings there have been other forts of sorts of beings which have caused harm to the fae as well and in the sense that the fae are pure joy there's so much innocence in a fae it is something which has been harvested for use of dark magic from time to time because dark magic can't create its own light it's forgotten it's connected to the light so it siphons it from other sources that have it so this is mostly where the harm to the fae has come into play are there specific humans that are here and incarnated to help the fairies or is it all of humans that should be helping the fae and protecting the fae mm. 
Yes, this is, this is a fun one to talk about. There are very specific humans that have incarnated with part of their purpose to connect into the Fae and bridge their energy in. All, everyone is going to be benefited in connecting in. But you see, there's lots of humans that are deeper in the matrix, you could say, that are deeper connected in to a sense of reality which doesn't allow this to come into existence. So there are some humans who have chosen to incarnate with a strong connection into these places to help the Fae. The Fae have been under grave attack, like we have said, from these shadow beings for a long time. So the more humans that start putting their love and light in, and yes, some people have chosen to have parts of this as their mission, it creates space and bridges for the fairies. And the more of this magic that starts to build, there's going to be a point when it reaches capacity and it's going to start to spill out and over into other people's connections. And other people are going to not be able to ignore it anymore because it will start to become apparent. But it has to start somewhere. So that is why some of you feel so called to the fame. You feel so called to a sense of magic to a sense of needing to build this connection because it needs to start somewhere. And when these people start to get together and share in this magic together, it builds a sense of momentum and it starts to expand and it will slowly start to leak out into the people that are further in the shadows. So it is a beautiful thing when you start to remember and start to feel your sense of connection into this realm. There are many humans that have this strong connection to us. So if you feel, if you feel you do, trust in that, play in that. As you mentioned before, a group of incarnated elementals can have a larger force to share. So how would a collective group of incarnated fairies help a town or community in comparison to just one or two incarnated fairies on their own? Mm. Co-create. Get together. Celebrate together, bringing in this energy. You can co-create the opening of portals together, which allow a high vibration of energy. Now, if one, one individual can, of course, create portals, but one individual has one individual sense of energy and certain levels of, there's a capacity to some levels of energy which might come in this way. When a group of people with these energies come together to co-create and to lift and raise the vibration, a higher level of vibration and energy is able to come and flood into a space. It is incredibly powerful to get together, to celebrate and dance and play. It creates an abundance and it starts to feed each other's energy. The magic in you will feed the magic in others and it will continue to grow. And then you all go back to your individual spaces, but you have more, you have more of a charge, you could say, built up around you that you can spread and share to others. Mm. Mm. So of course, getting together in person can be wonderful. We do understand there is distance. There is distance these days. You can still get together and create virtual fairy portals as well. You see, Dimensionally, not everything needs to be in one space. You energetically, you can share space, even if you are in different locations. Wonderful. I'm sure some events will be created after this. Is there anything remaining to heal between these relationships from the human plane in these incarnated humans? <laughs> there is much left to heal. You see, inner child, we would say, is incredibly important. And there are some incarnated fairies who have had the strong intention to connect in and haven't been able to because they have come into a space where their inner child was damaged, where their inner child has suffered a lot of trauma and a lot of very serious, scary 
adult things. And when the inner child is damaged and fractured in a way, it makes it very hard to connect in with our energy because our energy connects in the strongest to someone's inner child energy because it is that sense of wonder. When you were a child, you knew magic was real. You, you didn't know that, you didn't forget that until adults told you that it wasn't and you wanted to be like them and you trusted them. But as a young one, you knew you were so connected. You didn't need anyone to tell you this was real. It is that space. It is that mindset of energy which connects in with us, that just knowing. So the inner child work, we would say, is of most benefit to the individuals who are struggling connecting in with our energy. And even for those that feel a calling, but the light sort of flickers on and off, it could be because there is more inner child repair that needs to occur so that it is easier for our energy to connect into you. Yeah, great. I'm wondering about specifically where you are, the Fairy Collective, uh, do you have any insight into the spirit realm? Is that where you are in the spirit realm? Yes, that is where we are. Currently, we are, like we said, we are not incarnated, although we send messages to the incarnated fairies and the incarnated fairies send messages back to us. So we do have a constant relay with them, but we are in the spirit world, but we are located very closely to the fairy realm and we are branching out into the human realm. We are acting as, as an energetic bridge in some ways. We are helping to build a sense of communication and connection between the realms. Because the Fae themselves, it's not always easy to understand what a Fae is trying to say. There can be a lot of mis miscommunication. So we have started to branch out communication through this form of channel so that we can have a stronger dialogue of connection and communication. Mm. Mm. Can you share with us what it looks like where you are? Mm. What it looks like. Let us see how we can frame this in a way that will make sense. There is there's a lot of a lot of light. Like even when we look at, let's start with how we look at a human. From our side, when we look at a human, we can see, we can see part of their, we can see part of their map. We can see, we can see humans that have connections to parts of this world. We can see where there is dim light in their energy. We can see where, we can see their glow. We can read their glow in a way. And we can read the Earth's glow in a way. It's sort of hard to explain as it's, we have a way of interpreting different forms of light that we can see through different beings, which give us information. And the Fae, we can mostly see some of your solid form, but your solid form starts to become kind of secondary to us. It is not the first thing that we perceive. And the Fae, when we look at the Fae, this is even brighter for us because we are made up of a lot of their energy. So they are incredibly bright and there's a lot more story for us to read through their energy. It is easiest for us to connect in with humans that have fey energy connected into them because it is this which we are finally attuned to and can see stories. We can see other parts of the spirit realm as well. We don't necessarily have a strong need to venture out in a way as we are we're serving a purpose being where we are. So we tend to stay very close to the incarnated fairies and very both human and in the fairy realm. We are a collective. We are made up of several individuals, but our energy has sort of meshed together in a way where we are able to speak 
as one unified energy. I'm wondering, is it possible for us to astral project into the spirit realm and have conversations with people there? Is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. It most definitely is, and some of you do this without even realizing it. We can see astral project projection as well. So it is this energetic consciousness that we are able to see the imprints on. So when, when, when astral projects out of their body, like we said, the body was secondary to our perception. So it is we are able to perceive the astral form that leaves and these astral forms can meet up with other astral forms and have communication and connection together and we do see this and some of you when you dream and sleep at night astral project off into these realms because you feel the connections there and you know there's the connections there and you are communicating with friends of yours in these realms and you are communicating with all sorts of beings but when you awaken sometimes you don't you don't really remember this because it's hard to translate it into a conscious form but astral projecting consciously is most definitely possible to start to build connection and relationship outside of oneself so what if we were to astral project into the spirit realm, what we perceive the spirit realm to look like might look different to different people? Yes, it, it, it could depend on what your senses are. Not everyone perceives things the same. Not everybody sees the same energy spouts. We would say that it is common for individuals to experience a sense of blackness except for that which you focus on. And that which you focus on starts to become more clear. And you can sort of see, like, you, you might start to sort of see a path of things that are in focus. And then as soon as you look away, it goes out of focus. It is, you are sliding along a stream of consciousness. And it, it's almost like it's a, a blank book of possibility and only that which you are currently looking at is starting to take form. Would there be any physical symptoms from astral projecting, whether it be the spirit realm or other realms? Any physical symptoms to the body when you go back into your body? We would assume so, yes. We are not experts on human anatomy. But from what we see on our side, when energy leaves the body and comes back, that there would be some sensation occurring physically, which has to do with a transference of energy in and out of the body. Like we said, we are not an expert on the human point of view of connection. So we are not specifically sure of what you would experience, but we would imagine that you would experience a form of energy transference. Yeah, thank you so much for that insight. Um, one last question is what treats do fairies like for an offering? What specifically sweet treats would they prefer? Mm, berries. Berries. <laughs> berries. Berries and honey. Berries and honey. Mm. Now, these, <laughs> yes, berries and honey, and baked goods as well if they are baked with love. You see, we can feel the energy in food. So food which contains a lot of high vibrational loving energy, we can feel that and it glows to us and it is more exciting to us. And we would say that it is sort of, it is silly from our perception how humans connect with food because we can see the life in food. And you all eat a lot of food that is dead. You eat a lot of food which has chemicals, which has a lot of synthetic sort of ingredients. We can feel these energies as well. And they are not as enticing to us. We love living food, as in food that is made out of, you know, nuts and seeds and, and berries and fruit and, and little bits of honey. Okay, thank you so much. Mm.
you are very welcome. We are very excited to be able to start bringing forth more of our energy and information to a broader perspective of individuals. As we know, a lot of you are feeling, you are feeling our energy. Our energy is starting to increase and we know it is waking up bits of excitement in people. Thank you. This has been amazing. Good. Well, we hope to communicate again in the future. That would be lovely. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Hmm. Hi. Hi. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It's funny. The Faye, like my face actually feels sore afterwards because I feel like they have such like a strong smile energy. <laughs> like I'm not actually used to feeling that so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. Thank you so much, Michelle. This has been really great. And um, I think everyone's questions got answered. So that's really great. <clears throat> oh, good. Everyone's saying thank you on the chat box. So yeah, thank you everybody for attending. And yeah, we we may just do this again. Yeah, thanks so much for every everyone that tuned in today. I'm very glad to be able to bring through messages from the Fae. It was it was lovely.